What are the differences between the Camino Frances and the Camino Portugues? Hey, it's David and welcome back to my channel. I just came back from walking the Camino Portugues from Porto to Santiago. I also walked the Camino Frances from St. John to Santiago back in 2019. And I want to share with you some of these findings, what I believe to be the differences between the two most popular Caminos. So before diving in, let's take a look at a high level overview of the differences based on numbers from the Pilgrim's Office. If we go back to 2019, the year before COVID, we can see that 350,000 pilgrims arrived in Santiago. And of that number, 60% came from the Camino Frances. So by far, the Frances is the most popular Camino. And most people start in either Saria or St. John. Now, the Portuguese route is the second most popular Camino, with 30% of pilgrims doing the Portuguese route and most of them finished the central route. There's also the coastal route along the Atlantic Ocean as well. The first difference I want to talk about is the differences in options and routes. Now, on the Camino Frances, there's one main route, one main Camino from St. John to Santiago. And yes, you can take these alternative pathways, but you end up in the same place as everyone else. And when you see the same faces every day, at cafes, at restaurants, at albergues, you end up building connection and camaraderie. And whether you are a day behind or a day ahead, you end up seeing the same people. And on the Portuguese route, yes, you do that as well, but the fact is there are two main routes, the coastal route along the Atlantic Ocean and the central route, which is inland. There's also a spiritual variant that some people take as well. And some people decide to cross over from one route to the other one. I went on the coastal route for the first few days, and then I went towards the central route. And when that happens, the people that you meet on one route who don't decide to cross over with you, you might never see them again. On the Frances, you don't really get that because there's one main route. And when that happens, you're better able to build and strengthen these connections. And for me, that's a big difference between the Portuguese and the Frances, the connection and camaraderie. There's also far fewer pilgrims on the Portuguese route as compared to the French route. And this is backed up by the number 60% of pilgrims that end up in Santiago do the French route as compared to 30% on the Portuguese route. Most people on the Portuguese route, they do the central route. So that one's a bit busier. On the coastal route, there are far fewer pilgrims. So you might not bump into too many pilgrims on the coastal route. For example, I did the coastal coastal route out of Porto. And on day one, I barely met any pilgrims. I barely saw any pilgrims. I didn't meet anyone up until I got to the albergue and the bruge. And that's because coming out of Porto, you're walking along the coast with potentially other pilgrims, tourists and locals. It's not as intimate. If you want more of an intimate experience, go do the central route. I ended up meeting a lot more pilgrims when I moved over to the central route on day two. Now, this could also be a good thing because if you want solitude, the Camino Portugues, that's a great way, a great Camino for reflection and solitude. You will meet a lot more people on the Camino Frances. It's not to say you won't meet people in the Portuguese because that's what I did as well. I met a lot of great people, but there are a lot less people on the Camino Portugues. But because there are far fewer people on the Camino Portugues, that means there's no bed race for beds in albergues. And that's a great thing because there's less stress. On the Camino Frances, I remember rushing to get to a town because I wanted to get a bed because if you got to a place after three or four o'clock, you might not have a bed. I did not find this problem on the Camino Portugues because there are far fewer people. There's no Camino bed race. There's less stress. I usually got a bed as soon as I arrived. I didn't need to reserve a bed in advance. And that makes a big difference because when you're rushing, you're not really enjoying the Camino. There's less stress because you can go with the flow, you can arrive in a place, and most likely you'll find a bed, from my experience, doing it in April 2022. When it comes to infrastructure, both Caminos are well suited for pilgrims, but by far there's a lot more infrastructure on the Camino Frances for pilgrims. For example, if you want to ship your bag from one town to the next, there's a delivery service that is advertised in all these albergues and hostels and hotels on the Camino Frances. 
I didn't see that on the Camino Portugues. Maybe there is, I just didn't see it advertised. The other thing that I noticed was filling stations for water. I saw a lot more water fountains on the Camino Frances as compared to the Camino Portugues. On the Portuguese route, I usually filled up my water at cafes and restaurants and at rest stops. The other thing is that because there's more infrastructure on the Camino Frances, there's more options, more flexibility. If you decide you don't want to go as far, there's a higher likelihood of you finding a place to stay as compared to the Portuguese route, there are less options in terms of places to stay. Also less cafes and restaurants on the Portuguese route as well. The other thing that I noticed was that it's a lot more commercial on the Camino Frances, especially from Saria onwards. I remember people trying to sell me things like souvenirs, there are these shops that sell Camino souvenirs as well. You don't see that on the Portuguese route, so that's a big thing that you do notice on the Camino Frances. In terms of scenery, both Caminos are scenic. You'll encounter small towns, old bridges, villages, vineyards, and forests. On the Frances, you'll encounter almost everything except the coast from mountains to forests to small and big towns. Going up and over the Pyrenees is special, and it's unbeatable. It's the classical Camino with more of that pilgrim feel. Now on the Portuguese, this depends if you decide to do the coastal, central, or both routes. On the coastal route, you'll see some of the most beautiful coastal views. For me, I personally miss more of that Camino pilgrim feel and decided to go towards the central route on day two. The central route of the Portuguese has more of that Camino feel, more pilgrims, small towns, villages, old Roman bridges. And if you decide to do the spiritual variant of the Portuguese, you'll also see old towns, forests, and the coast. It's very picturesque. The boat ride from Villanova to Padrone is also very beautiful and unique. There's a lot to see on the Portuguese routes, but they are split up. So as a whole, I think that the Camino Frances seems to have more variety and feels more magical when it comes to what you see and experience. The other thing that I noticed was there seems to be a lot more road walking, pavement, and cobblestone walking on the Camino Portugues as compared to the Frances. This is mainly for the central route because on the coastal route of the Camino Portugues, it's very chill and easy because you're walking along the beach along these wooden planks so that isn't a problem it's when you decide to make the switch if you make the switch from the coastal route to the central route and on that central route there seems to be more road walking i remember on day two when i made the switch from the coastal route to the central route it was all along the road and it was very dangerous at times you're walking alongside cars and trucks and so you really have to be careful and once i got to the central route there were sections where you were walking alongside the road and I re remember on the Frances, there were sections of road walking, but not as many sections. And language is obviously going to be different on the Camino Portugues as compared to the Camino Frances. If you decide to start in St. John on the Camino Frances, then you're only going to be spending one day in France. On the Camino Portugues, you might start in Porto, you might start in Lisbon, so there's a higher likelihood that it helps to know at least the basic phrases of Portuguese. For example, thank you is obrigado, obrigada in Portuguese as compared to gracias in Spanish. People say bom caminho in Portuguese as compared to buen camino in Spanish. And as my Portuguese friend likes to say, the English of the Portuguese people is a lot better than the English of the Spanish. So it might help you get by a little bit easier in Portugal. But in my experience, if you don't know any Spanish or Portuguese, you can still get by. But of course, it helps to know basic phrases in Spanish and Portuguese. Now, food is great on both Caminos. Wine is also plentiful. But I'll tell you the big difference that I saw. It comes down to the pilgrim's menu. I found the pilgrim's menu on the Camino Frances to be a lot more worth it. I remember paying 10 euros on the Camino Frances for a pilgrim's menu for dinner. And I got a starter, which was soup or salad, a main dish, dessert, and wine. It was such a great deal. 
Now, on the Camino Portugues, there were pilgrim menus, but for 8, 9 euros, I got a starter, a main dish, and a drink. Oftentimes, I didn't get dessert. I had to pay for dessert out of pocket. I remember the dinners on the Camino Frances to be more fun and the pilgrim menu to be more part of that Camino experience. And lastly, when we talk about expenses, people say Portugal is cheaper than Spain. And yes, I did find that to be true, but not by a whole lot. When I look at the coffees, the meals, and the drinks, Portugal was a bit cheaper, but not by a whole lot. When I look at my actual expenses, I actually spent more on the Camino Portugues than the Camino Frances, largely because of my own personal budget, but I spent more on dinners. Let me explain. On the Camino Frances for dinners, I would spend 10 euros on the pilgrim's menu that included everything. Wine, bread, a main course, a starter, a dessert. And on the Camino Portugues, I didn't always order the pilgrim's menu. And when I did, oftentimes I would pay extra for dessert or for more wine. And when I didn't order a pilgrim's menu, I ate out at restaurants. And that often was more expensive than 10 euros. So that's a big consideration. On the Camino Frances, there's more infrastructure, more options for pilgrim's menu. And so you don't need to go out to eat at restaurants all the time. And that often becomes cheaper for you. So there you have it, the Camino Frances versus the Camino Portugues. The Camino Frances, more popular, more people, more infrastructure, and also more commercial as well. Now the Camino Portugues, more route options. You have the coastal route, the central route, the spiritual variant, less people, potentially less stress because you don't have to race to a bed. Also more time for solitude if that's what you're looking for. Now, there isn't a Camino that is better than the other Camino. In my experience, it's based on where you are in life, the reason that you're walking the Camino, and the people that you might meet as well. These are all factors that you can find in either Camino that can determine your experience. And for me, walking these two Caminos, I was in two different stages of my life, two different reasons to walk as well, and I got what I needed from these Caminos. They were both great experiences, and so I can only wish you uh, well. I hope that this was helpful. If you've walked both of these Caminos, tell me in these comments below what you find to be the biggest differences. Anyways, I wish you well. Take care, bon Camino, and buen Camino.